I'm Ledger Shaw. I'm Dalton Owens. I'm Alina Ha. And today we'll be discussing the topic that really interested our group because we're so unfamiliar with it, and that is whether brain injury lawsuits will doom or save the NFL. And now I'm not saying that these lawsuits will end the game forever because that's quite difficult, but it's more about raising awareness about the negative <coughs> aftershocks that happen on later down the road that people are just now realizing is very dangerous. And now, the controversy about sports-related injuries has always been prevalent because playing a sport is dangerous, as you all know. But the recent developments in the research of these degenerative diseases that come from repeated concussions, like CTE, like dementia, early onset Alzheimer's, all of these are now, like, they all pertain to past, present, and future football players. And so now, here's me to talk about the effects of these brain injuries. Thank you, Zara. So, according to the American Academy of Neurology, they did a survey over 1,094 former NFL players to see if there's any side effects, you know, from playing football over the years. And they found that 51% had reported they've been knocked unconscious more than once. 70% of Avengers said that they were not required to sit on the bench after receiving head traumas. And 31% reported they had difficulty with memories. Now, obviously, from the statistics here, we know that there's probably some bad long-term effects from getting multiple concussions from playing football. And so, after research was done, it's found that one of the major negative effects from playing football and receiving concussions is chronic traumatic encephal <laughs> CTE, which basically is a brain disease that alters the brain function or structure. Basically, you get it from multiple jostling of the brain, and it results in First, difficulty with memory, as Sire has mentioned before. People with CTE experience early signs of dementia, and in turn, it eventually actually leads to death, sadly. Another thing is it results in a normal formation of protein tangles, and then leads to cell death, which interferes with, first, the ability of critical thinking and concentration, and the ability to be able to, again, retain memory. Lastly, it has to do, it affects, <laughs> sorry, it affects um, mood swings. So people with CTA experience depression <coughs> and eventually, unfortunately, like in the article, most of them commit suicide. And now we're gonna pass to Elijah who will discuss what our group gained from this article. Thank you, B. So now that we talked about the fundamental issues that occur in the NFL <coughs> with brain injuries, we often downplay the significance of it. Usually, when we see football players, they're big, macho men, and they make billions of dollars, right? So they're paying the price. However, they're often, like we said, uh, taken back into the field. So while the short-term effect might be, oh, they got hit, they'll have a bruise, it's actually the long-term effects that matter. Long-term effects can also include death, coma, CTE, and even memory lost. So, what do we do about this, and why is it important to us? Well, it could be your brother, it could be your sister, and it could be your idol. Uh, approximately $1.9 billion are made in the NFL, but only a small percentage are gone, or is given as medical attention to these football players. So, now, in order for us to take preventive measures, there's moms and dads who are like sick of a, um, Sorry, they're sick of their kids getting hurt. So they have made a uh, society, medical team of moms and dads united, and they make money for this medical attention, to gain medical attention for these kids. And so while it might not be us who are getting hit in the field, medicine is an extremely important um, concept, regardless of whether we're on the field or not. And so now to talk about us individually, I'm gonna give it to Dalton. So, how many of you are a student athlete or know someone that is a student athlete? That's a big number. This affects us in that way because, from which is our education. Many of us are involved in sports or know someone that is involved in sports. So, if the NFL is facing scrutiny about how much mental attention they give to their athletes, eventually it's going to come back to us and how much we are giving to our athletes. But it doesn't just stop there. This affects us in our careers as well. Take Alina, for example. She's a business administration student. If she ever wanted to start a business, she has to get her brand out there. So she'll have to contact people like me and Zyra, who are marketing students. An easy way to gain publicity is to have an athlete or a corporation 
sponsor your business. Now, if the NFL is facing scrutiny and getting discredited, that does not help Alina's business. If anything, it's going to actually provide a negative impact for her. That makes someone like V have a harder time of, of handling that situation because she's a finance major. So she has to analyze how that affects Alina's business and then give advice to her. And then if you're like Ledja, who's a pre-med student, but also um, she's majoring in biology and healthcare management, she has to figure out how the sports injuries are gonna affect her as a doctor because she's either gonna face more the longer that the NFL is in business or she's going to lose business because they're going to start taking it this seriously and start dismantling the NFL. This is a huge ethical concern and so we have to really understand what's at stake with the NFL doing this, which is what Alina is going to talk about now. So the issue of NFL brain injury lawsuits correlates with the ethical issue of um, of publicly funded sports stadiums with the large number of fans getting packed into arenas where there's expensive parking, overpriced food, and tempting merchandise. It's no secret that this the professional sports industry is massive and profitable. However, these sports stadiums are often paid by taxpayers and little revenue is given back to the community. And these public subsidies um, get transferred to the pockets of billionaire team owners and players. Um, a frequent argument is that the money that fans spend at these events will produce a big enough economic impact to give taxpayers back their money. However, um, there will never be enough tax revenue generated because most of these events held at these stadiums are relied on the local fan base. And so there should be private funding instead to pay off for these stadiums. And that tax money that taxpayers spend should be spent on other expenses, such as college tuition and school lunches. So while your favorite football team is winning on the field, it's at the cost of um, players' injuries and taxpayers' pockets. Thank you. Any questions? 